Hello and welcome to Blue Zone. Blue here and today we're going to look at uh, Harpoon missiles. So this is a tutorial how to deploy Harpoon missiles. The objectives. We're going to learn how to deploy them and we're also going to learn the different release and targeting mode. And why do we care? Well those are very effective, this is a very effective weapon against naval targets. It's good to have in your arsenal and know how to use it. You use it to engage naval targets and also to uh, when you need weapons for an of the earth type of weapon and we'll go through that. Now you'll see here the harpoon uh, there's the code in the stores it's HPD and it says it has a range of 129 miles uh, the documentation says it could go further it depends on your altitude so uh, bear that in mind. There's two launch mode with four programs and I say MU preset here and I'll show you why. So there's a bearing only launch mode and that is used when you don't know the range of the target but you know the area that they are in. And you have the range and bearing launch which in this case here you know where the target is you have it locked or designated with a radar FLIR LST waypoint or any other method of designating a target now in your MU in your aircraft manager for the VR Superbug you'll see on the MU tab if you go down under the HPD which is for Harpoon you'll see all the different Harpoon programs now those as you can tell you can change those Harpoon programs and then those will be the four programs that show up in your uh, in your weapon store when you select the uh, different programs. Now you can also change those settings while you're in the aircraft. Now the bearing on the launch, uh, BOL, the options. There's a fly out option, which is the initial flight of the harpoon is going to be at either 5,000, 15,000, or 35,000 feet. Now notice the default here are marked in yellow. So you'll see that each option is marked uh, whatever option is default. So the default uh, mode is bearing on the launch and the flight option default is 15,000 feet, which is medium. You have a terminal option, which is when it locks onto a target, it will either pop, do a pop-up attack or skim to a along the water and hit it. You have a search range option. Now it says 0 to 105 nautical miles. So search range is basically telling the harpoon at what range should I start looking for targets. You have a destruct option and it, this one basically is telling your harpoon at what range should it self-destruct if it does not find any targets. So you can see the search and the destroy will give you a range that it will search. Kind of a window like. And finally the bearing option. The the bearing option is uh, which which uh, bearing angle should it go? Which bearing should it go to fly out the harpoon to look for a target? So you can you can see here that you're setting up all the parameters for uh, searching for naval target. The search and the destroy being the when I start to search and when I end to search the search of a of a targets. Now there's one more thing, it's called fixed point. And the fixed point basically is enable uh, a navigation stabilized point where you'll have it will be in the center between your search and destroy. So if I set a fixed point, the search gonna be X amount of miles before and destroy is gonna be X amount of miles after. It's going to be right in between. So let's say in this example here, I have 0 and 60. It's a 60 mile range, so my search will start 30 miles before the nav point and 60, uh, 30 miles after the nav point. That'll make more sense once we look at it in the aircraft. So let's look at the bearing on the launch, see what that looks like. So uh, for the sake of our example here, just uh, take a look at the compass rows to get your an approximation where the the bearing is going to be. So I have an aircraft, I have a harpoon missile, and I think I have some naval target at that angle, which is approximately uh, 050. 
So I set my bearing to 050. And I think that my target is is beyond 10 mile range. So I set a search for 10 miles. So that's where my harpoon is going to start searching for the target. And I'll set my destruct to uh, 60 miles, for example. So I don't think it's any further than 60 miles. It's between 10 and 60, so it's a 50, mi 50 mile window. If there's a ship in between, it will get picked up and destroyed based on the option terminal option is selected, whether it's a pop-up or a skim. Now, if I want to mask where I come from, I can add a harpoon turning point. So essentially, it's a waypoint that I have, and I can tell a harpoon, fly to this waypoint first, and then look for targets at my search point and my destroy point. So I have the bearing, I can set the bearing where I expect the target to be. But in this case here, I'm going to have my my harpoon travel through the turning point so the target will not know where I'm firing from. My search point, my search uh, uh, setting will be the same and I'll have my destruction setting. And if I have a ship in between, it will be Gonzo, Goner. Now let's take a look at the BOL stores. This, uh, one thing I want to point out, if you look in this window here, you will see that the timing, it says timing 030, it does have a 30 second warm up. Now if we go to the buttons around uh, the, the stores, you'll see the mode. The mode will select BOL or RBOL, which is range, uh, range bearing launch or bearing only launch. That's what changes that setting. Next one we have is the flight. That's when we decide where it goes 35,000 feet or 5,000 feet or 15,000 feet. So the, it decides a flight you can cycle through uh, low, medium, and high. The term, the term itself is for the terminal attack. Is it going to be pop or skim? Now you see here there's a HPTP. We got nothing. That's because we don't have it selected. If we had it selected, we'd have something here. And the fixed point is not selected either, so we're not using fixed point. The step only steps through each harpoon, just like any other weapon. The, U the UFC actually allows us to set the search, destroy, and bearing in aircraft by using the options here. Now at the bottom, data is just data about the current, uh, current uh, position and whatnot. The program is to switch between program 1, 2, 3, and 4 that you have set in your MU. Now if we look at the HSI, what it looks like, you'll see here you have your search uh, line here. It's going 90 degrees due east and self-destruct here. So hopefully in between you will have a target that it would pick up. Now in the HUD, it's a little bit hard to see here, but it will tell you which mode you're in. In this case here it says uh, harpoon bearing only launch and above it below the altitude tape or altitude box you will see uh, you'll get an indication whether you're in range meaning you're in range of the missile uh, assuming you have something locked in this case we don't use lock we actually look based on uh, where they would be at uh, you'll ha or you'll have some indication of uh, some some issue or error so for example, in this case here, it says search destroy slash destroy, which means that my search, my distance between my search and destroy is too short. But I created this, uh, this so that you would see what it looks like on HSI. So not to worry, we will be doing this in the aircraft. Now, if I add in a, a harpoon turning point, in this case here, you see the only thing that changes is that I have M1, next to the harpoon turning point, which is the waypoint on the HSI that I selected. And as far as Superbark is concerned, the M1 point, MK1, is WP20, uh, waypoint 20. Now let's take a look at the range and bearing launch. So in this case here, we know where the target is. We have it locked or designated with some, by some method. Let's look at the options we have. The flyout options, they are the same. The term option, 
they are the same. Now the only thing that's different is a seek option. So the seek, it will seek the target and then uh, it gives you 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers. And I, I put an approximation in miles, but it's basically the size of uh, where it will look for that target that you've locked on. Now obviously if you have it uh, a small window, it would be very discriminate, discriminating which target it hits, as opposed to a large window will be less discriminating. So it may hit a different target than what you intended. If you have friendlies around, you may want to keep it small. So let's take a look at the range bearing launch, right? So I have a lock on the target. And I can select a small seek option, medium seek option, or large seek option. And essentially, it will uh, send a harpoon and use the the, uh, the flight option is selected, so the altitude in other words, and I'll use a terminal option that I selected, the pop or skim. Now, much like the bearing only launch, I can also use the bearing only launch with an HTTP, HPTP, a harpoon turning point. Now, notice here I've put the, the default medium and basically my harpoon is going to travel to a waypoint, the waypoint that I selected for a harpoon turning point and turn towards the target and using the seeking option we've selected. Now the store page looks a little bit different. The only, you see that you don't have the other ones that we have in bearing on the launch and we have a new one here which is the seek option below the terminal option and the seek option here uh, in this case, we have selected large, but you could select different seek options, uh, small, medium, or large. And here, we don't have any target locked, right? Which is why we, we don't have a timer going, but we don't have any target locked, so the harpoon is not enabled. Once we have a target locked, that will change. Now, once we have a target locked, in this case here, we're in zone, so I could fire here and hit the target. So take a look on the other side here. You'll see that it's in zone and it's radar locked is what's telling you for an indication under here. Now I could have in range which means I'm within the range of the weapon but I'm not in the zone to launch it. So in other words you want to be in zone to launch your target. Launch at your target. Now with a H PTP. It's essentially the same where I create a turning point and where it's going to, my missile is going to go to the turning point before it goes towards the target to mask where we're at. One thing to note is I will show, demonstrate this in the aircraft, but if you have dash lines anywhere, chances are there's an issue. And uh, I'll show you the different messages you'll get to identify what the issue is. But uh, I'll show you in the aircraft, so in other words, that uh, the the missile itself cannot turn on the dime length. So if, you, if the angle is too tight for the missile to turn, it just will not work. And it will give you that indication. So let's take a look at the out of zone condition. Invalid search. So the search range is more than 105 nautical miles. So if you get this, you need to change your range, search range. Invalid target. The target is too far. You're beyond the 172 nautical mile that it can detect. That it can uh, attack, I mean. Uh, the altitude. So, you, so here's uh, something you need to know. So you can't launch below 2,500 feet. So you need to be above 2,500 feet to launch one of those uh, Harpoon missiles. Off axis. The harpoon won't be able to make the turn to the harch, uh, uh, harpoon turn point. And here, the harpoon turn point angle is too tight. It will not be able to make the turn either. So the next one is the aircraft harpoon turn point. The aircraft is too close to the turn point, so it won't be able to turn because it's too close. The target is too close to the harpoon turn point, and this indication here. 
And this one here is the one that we looked at where we're saying that the distance between the search and destroy is too short. And finally, there's a, the destroy range is larger than the max range, and I'll show you what that looks like. Now let's take a look at what this looks like in the Superbug. We are all set up to start looking at the Harpoon weapon. What I've done is I've actually popped out the display so we could look at them and actually talk about each of uh, different options. Now I want to point out that I do have my ar arm switches on and air to ground is selected. I've set up my radar to pick up sea target at 80 miles, up to 80 miles, and also set up my HSI to 80 miles so we can easily see that what we're trying to do. So now I'm going to remove the, uh, the clutter here so we can see a little bit better. Okay. So now let's take a look at the harpoon. I want to point out that when I first select the harpoon, take a look here, you see there's a timing. So there's a 30 second warm up. And I believe uh, according to the uh, wiki, it's ready to be used after 25 seconds. Now looking around uh, the, uh, the actual store's display, let's go at the bottom first. You see the program switch. The program switch will actually change between four programs. And if you recall, we just discussed this. It was in the, whatever you have set, set up in your MU. It will go between the, the four programs you have set up. Now you'll notice that there's an X on this one here. And the reason being is that uh, range and bearing launch mode actually requires a lock target to be enabled. So therefore it's telling you the range is not, this mode is not uh, currently uh, usable until you have a target locked in. So now, uh, so let me take a look at the, uh, we just saw the mode one. So let's go back to your program one. So here you can see that the, the mode we have uh, bearing, bearing only launch and uh, we have a flight uh, mode that the flight uh, portion is high which is uh, 35,000 feet and the terminal portion is pop where it will pop before you hit the target and here you have the HPTP education we have none so there's nothing indicating here but if I was to select one I currently have waypoint zero so if I was to select one it would actually put waypoint zero as my HPTP so that's how you select and set an uh, HPTP. Now you see that we have a search parameter, uh, distance parameter, uh, sorry, self-destruct parameter, and a bearing parameter. Now those uh, parameters are only available in the bearing only launch mode. And they can be changed using the UFC uh, switch here. So if I press UFC, I can change my search range to search start a search after 10 miles I can tell it the destruction uh, self-destruct uh, selected to self-destruct after 60 miles or maybe 70 miles and the bearing I can tell it to uh, set a bearing wherever I want so right now I could set the bearing to uh, 30 so I set the bearing to 30 so now you see how the bearing is set to 30 so what that means is that uh, the search and destroy as we discussed, if there's a if I launch and there's an aircraft between the start search distance, which is 10 miles, and the self-destruct, which is 70 miles, if it finds a, a, a ship in between, it will actually attack that ship. So that's the bearing only mode. The uh, other mode that we have, which is the uh, range of bearing range of bearing launch actually requires a lock and we'll look at that with uh, our targets once we look at targets and start launching. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, switches on the left hand side here. So the most switch obviously switches between range and bear, uh, range bearing launch and bearing only launch. Now the range bearing launch the only thing we uh, the sorry the bearing only launch here so there's only two modes the flight mode is the same for both uh, the flight uh, portion of the Harpoon uh, flight has three settings high medium and low as we talked about 35,000 feet 15,000 feet and 5,000 feet 
and the terminal portion of the flight is either pop or skim. Skim is say, stays low to the, the water and pop will pop up to destroy and we'll see that later on and I will show you some of those uh, missile profile. Now if I change mode to range bearing, so range bearing launch, you see that's the same with the exception of the seek. So you can change the seek uh, section to small, medium or large to have a 6, 12 or 18 square mile uh, seek area. Or if you want a metric, which is uh, what the documentation calls for, 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers and 30 kilometers. So now let's go back to our bearing only launch. You will notice that there's an FXP. The way FXP works is they will take whatever point you have in between your start search and self-destruct and actually stabilize it on that. And what I mean by that is let me show you. So I will set my bearing to uh, 090. So I go to UFC. Bearing 090. So now you'll notice that it is going to the side here at 090. So stabilize. I'm flying due north and stabilize to 090. If I press FXP, it's now stabilized around this center point here. So what will happen is that uh, as I go further, you'll see that uh, the uh, the pointer, the bearing pointer, is no longer pointing to uh, 030. It's now pointing to, it's starting to shift its actual, uh, on its own, its own axis. It's kind of hard to see a little bit until we get a little bit further. But essentially, it's, centri it's uh, centering on the center between the start and the self-destruct. And uh, now you can start to see where it's no longer 090. And let's see what happens if I decide to make my bearing launch uh, 180. So I do 180 and enter. Nothing happens because we're already on FXP and it already locked it to the center between, it all already stabilized the center between the start and the self-destruct. So anything that's within that, uh, that window will get uh, attacked by a Harpoon missile. Now if I remove the FXP, it should go straight to the 180 bearing. And finally, one more thing I want to point out is that uh, on the HSI itself, you see right now I am at uh, 2,500 feet, uh, 2,000 feet. It gives me a warning here, altitude. I cannot launch below uh, 2,500 feet. So therefore, in order to be able to launch, I would have to go to 2,500 feet. So now what I'll do is I'll go in and uh, actually increase my altitude and once I reach 2500 feet that altitude uh, indication is going to be gone and now because I'm, uh, I'm pointing behind me it's going to give me some other warning but you see below the warning area which is right below the altitude indication there's HP bowl it means a harpoon bearing on the launch it tells you which mode it's in now we're currently off axis because it's pointing behind us, but notice how the altitude one is gone. So that is it in a nutshell. Uh, you get We get more in indication in a harpoon once we start using the radar and we target and we'll see uh, mean time to maximum range and then in short you want to launch when it says in zone. When you're in zone you satisfy every conditions that you need to fire the missile and when you are in range it doesn't mean in zone. In range means that you're within the range but you're not in the zone to launch and, k and get the, the target. So I will come back once we are ready to we're gonna get some targets on our radar, some ship targets and then we'll look at uh, launching different modes. Okay so we've just picked up a radar contact and a, it appears to be moving ships and let's take a look at what we have on the stores page. So we've selected a range bearing launch. Uh, flight, flight's gonna start flying low, and then it will go 
the terminal portion will be a pop attack and it will seek in a medium sized window which is 20 kilometers or roughly 12 miles square now there's no HPTP so let's go ahead and lock the target and see what happens to the condition here that's crossed out so I'm going to lock the target okay designated okay I have a target designated see how it becomes enabled right away now I have a mean time to uh, you see the MTT time to maximum range 99 so we're a little bit far but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit different here I'm going to basically say uh, let's uh, put an HPTP through it so we'll put it through waypoint 1 if you look on my HSI here so waypoint 1 and HPTP there we go so now you see in the radar it says invalid target because it's essentially out of range one thing I want to point out about range is that the lower you are the less range you have and conversely the higher you, ha you are the more range you have because of kinetic energy so in, in this case here we're going to have to wait out the time to maximum range before it becomes in range and hopefully we can still satisfy in zone with the uh, with what we have here with the HPTP point Now, we, according to this, we have t still 53 seconds and we're getting a little bit of turbulence here. But that's okay. So you could, uh, we could also uh, take out the target here and then notice how you have 80 mile range. That means you could set uh, a bearing launch only pointing to 180 degrees between self-destruct at 80 miles and start search at uh, 40 miles and that would pick up the target and destroy it and that's what we'll do next we'll just use different programs and try to hit it in different ways so now times to maximum range is uh, 12 seconds so we should get a good fire solution uh, shortly here okay so it disappeared so we're within range so we're no longer uh, at the maximum range but notice how we still cannot uh, get to the target because of our range so we don't have enough range so we have to wait till the inver uh, invalid target prompt that we have in the HUD here disappear before we can fire so now I'm gonna fly a little bit more towards uh, no, I'm gonna wait. We're gonna wait it out. Maybe what we should do is launch uh, other modes for now. So I had said that if we have uh, between self-destruct at 70, 75, and search at 10, we should be able to find that target. So let's uh, launch a bearing only uh, weapons. So bearing only, and I will not, uh, I will not use the HPTP in this case here. Go bearing only, and that should be. Let's see what we have for setups here. We have 70 nautical miles, yeah, and 10 mile search, so that should work. Flight low, pop, let's fire, let's fire at that weapon. It shows in zone, weapon, weapon away. Now let's change our terminal attack on this one here and make it a skin. We'll fire at that one. So now it just goes and picks up whatever is in between those two. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch to our program to a low and skim small seek. We'll change the seek to medium and we have a large target. We're in zone so we'll fire. And the next one we're going to do is uh, we'll change our program to program 4. We'll change the flight to medium or no we'll leave it at low and then we'll do a pop attack on this case here with an HPTP on waypoint 1 and uh, which still shows that we're inverted target uh, I mean invalid target so we're gonna we'll see if we can position ourselves to have a better range here
Now, whenever you look just below the altitude tape, we'll always tell you if you have something wrong with the the uh, the solution you selected. Now, just for giggles, if I was to select waypoint two, I believe my target is too close to waypoint two. We get a different error. So let's uh, let's try that. HPTP off, select waypoint 2 and it gives me target HPTP so the target is too close to the HPTP so we can't use that one so if we remove that and go back to HPTP and oh this time we are in zone with HPTP so let's go ahead and fire Now what I want to do is I want to fly towards the target and go look at those. Uh, we will go lo look at those uh, what we've created and uh, when we fire that. So hang tight. We're gonna look at the flight profile, see what that looks like, and then we'll take a look at the results of our attack. The first profile I want to look at for the harpoon is where one where we use a high flight and we actually use a pop-up terminal. Now as a reference I'm flying 20,000 feet and I selected high so if you look here this is the altitude profile for the harpoon and I'll do that for each one of the modes that we use. So you see here that the harpoon weapon actually goes up to 35,000 feet and then it starts going down and it does a follow nap of the earth and you'll see it in the label once it, once it launches here that it's at about uh, 90 feet, set between 70 and 90 feet and it goes terminal and when it, when once, uh, once, it's, once it goes, uh, gets near the target, it picks up the target it does a pop-up attack onto the target in this case here you'll see that uh, I have another weapon going at the same time so you kind of see two for the price of one <laughs> And uh, on this side here, you can take a look at the airspeed and some of the parameters. And you'll notice that the weapon is subsonic. What we mean by that is it's not going at uh, uh, twice the speed of sound, three times the speed of sound. It, uh, most of the time, it's below the speed of sound. So anyways, let's take a look at uh, what it looks like when it attacks the target. And here we go. See how it's going up, and now it's gonna go down and up the earth fall about the uh, 70 feet look at the amount of feet here it's in this case here it's going down to 85 feet 83 feet and then it's going to do a pop-up attack on the target and you saw another missile pass it and they're both doing a pop-up attack here we go same target they just hit the target so that is the uh, attack with the high uh, flight going to 35,000 feet and ending with a pop-up attack. The next harpoon we're going to look at the attack profile is uh, slightly different. We start at a medium altitude and ter uh, terminate with a pop-up. So we still have the same reference altitude, 20,000 feet. It goes down to a medium altitude of 15,000 feet and then it will go down to the nap of the earth around 70 to 90 feet and does a pop-up attack. In fact, if you take a look at it, uh, let's, uh, let's watch it go. That is the one that we were just seeing behind us. I actually got ahead of our first missile that we were just looking at. So if you see it here, it's at 15,000 feet in the label. And it goes down and gets ahead of the other, the other missile. And it does a pop-up attack. And we'll attack the ship in a second here. There we go. And hits the target. Now this harpoon attack profile is uh, the next one that we have on our list. We start at 20,000 feet as our reference, but in this case here we selected the low and then the skim attack as a terminal phase. So the missile will actually go down to 1,000 feet and then it will go down and skim the water at 70 to 90 feet and it never pops up, it just attacks the target. So let's see what that looks like. There it goes. 
and the label is showing us that it's uh, going down to 1,000 feet. It's maintained around 1,000 feet. Now it's gone all the way down to 53 feet. And then it's going to stay down until it hits the target. There you go. So it has hit the target. This next harpoon we're going to look at. Uh, this one is uh, slightly different. This one we do. We are using the range, range uh, and bearing launch. You'll notice here by the graph we, we're starting at 10,000 feet. We selected a medium altitude, which brings us to 15,000 feet, and then we we chose a skim as a terminal. So you don't see it pop up. You only see it go down to skim level, which is uh, about 50 to 90 feet. They're about 70. It's really low. And then it will hit the target. So let's take a look what it does. If you remember HPTP, it will actually take a turn and hit towards our target. Let's see Let's see how that, uh, that looks. So now you see the weapon has been deployed. And we're reaching our altitude of 15,000 feet. So we can see it here. Now it's going to take a turning point very soon. There you go. It just turned and now it's headed towards the target. And it's still 15,000 feet. And now it starts going down. There we go. It's going to stay down and fall enough of the earth until it gets to the actual target and, and hit it. So that's the different profiles that you have with the harpoon weapon. Now just out of curiosity. We fired uh, some uh, some harpoons when we were uh, looking at how to uh, use the weapons and, uh, and launch them. Let's see how we did. So we can see here we're firing a missile, and we got three missiles fired, and we're firing a fort missile. Notice how the fort missile is going through the waypoint first. The HPTP and then it will converge onto the target. There we go. And notice how the plane is able to go faster than the actual missile. That's because the missiles are subsonic. So I just came around just to watch it hit. See, see the pop up, see the skim, and our fort missile here is going to hit and a pop up. And here we go. So overall, good success. We've hit uh, numerous targets, and uh, we can uh, we can see the the damage. I will show you the damage, and then take a look at that and see see what it looks like. So we got some hits here. That ship's going down. Here we go. And three more missiles just went into the carrier. So that's how we use the Harpoon missile. And this concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. And many more videos to come. This is Blue. Over and out.